Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead in today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings. Just going to do a full tour. It's been a while. I needed things to grow so that the videos weren't kind of boring week to week. So much is growing well. We're in the first week of October. This is my now pumpkin patch and crazy tomato patch. I've not been taking care of this. And what's kind of cool is sometimes when you just let plants go, they do better. Also have potatoes coming up in here. These are pumpkins. There's actually uh, two plants in there that I planted right down in that space and they've just taken over. And before they got to this old fencing, I just had it coiled sitting here and I was going to do something with it. Um, never got to it. But the pumpkins grew over here, filled up the cylinder, and you can see all these really cool winter squash. I think there's, that's two. There's another couple over there. There's one, three, and then one straight back there. Four, a couple in there. But this turned out to be, you know, happy accident, so to speak. I'm gonna make more of these cylinders and probably use this more for melons, uh, pumpkins, and cantaloupe in some, some way. But this space is really taking care of itself. Going to be doing a sweet potato harvesting video soon. I'm still letting the warm weather that we have still in October uh, help these sweet potatoes grow. But here's a little preview. You can see right in there, you know, a bunch of sweet potatoes. I think this is going to be an awesome harvest. Before we roll into the garden, let me take you around this way. I don't know if you've seen this before or not, but your sweet potatoes will flower and they're really beautiful flowers. And they're gonna be flowering all along here, but they're really attractive. These are beans that I'm still harvesting. This is probably wave three that they sowed themselves. These are just beautiful green beans. And they actually grew out of my compost and in front of it a little bit right down there. And I just let them go again. Sometimes with gardening we overcomplicate it and we do a whole lot to the soil and we over worry about how we have to tend them. These are just growing on their own, slow and steady. Crazy tomatoes taking over the place. My butternut squash vines have finally died off. We are getting some nights, you know, into the 48 degree range. So the summer stuff is sort of dying back. Powdery mildew got to this. There's all kinds of different powdery mildews. Some like cooler temperatures, some like warmer temperatures. You know, I stopped spraying these, but again, I probably got 30 butternut squash. Just did a video on compost, just using a lawnmower, you know, bag up some leaves, bag up some grass, throw it in there, get your pile started. That's all I'm going to stress today. This is actually heated up. Let's see if I can get that on there to 140 degrees. And that wasn't even my goal. My goal was is just to get your pile started. And this is going to just sit here for four or five months, get moved over to here. I'll have compost. Wild tomatoes doing the best in my garden right now. No care whatsoever. I'll continue to harvest from here. And you can see the red ones popping around, but just tons of cherry tomatoes. I'm actually going to save the seeds. Not sure what this variety is, but it's really hardy, disease resistant, left on its own. I'm going to grow a lot fewer tomato varieties next year. When we go inside the main garden, I'll just show you what I'm doing um, with some changes. Pulled out all my asparagus. Just a tip, asparagus does come with seeds. And if you let them fall over your garden, as much as I love asparagus, um, they can become invasive. The seeds just end up everywhere. Asparagus grows everywhere. You don't want it everywhere. So when you have the female plants, they end up with all those berries and you just want to remove them before they start falling on the ground. In the back, best eggplant ever. It's almost six feet tall, still going, being left alone, some dusting to deal with the flea beetles that I've talked about in other videos. Peppers right in there. Uh, I think they kind of like the heat of the soil, but they don't necessarily like being pounded by the sun and it's a little bit more shady over here, but it's a good combination. Um, if you have a good eye, you can see some eggplant right down there. Just planted these up in a video for some cool weather crops. We're into October, so I'm growing the crops now that will germinate quickly, 
grow fine with the frost, but they don't take as long to mature, like maybe uh, cauliflower or broccoli does. Fabric pots, you can dump out the soil. I dump out soil when I need to fill up my raised beds. I'll put new soil in there. With the fabric pots, you can also leave it in there. They're not going to um, get damaged over the winter. When you're you know, growing in um, clay pots, ceramic pots, even plastic pots, if your temperatures freeze in the winter, the pot soil will freeze, expand, and it will really crack and damage your pots. There's a risk to that. So I don't know if you've been listening to me talk about my mushroom garden. This is one area, shade, different things in there. That's wood chips. Um, those are wood pellets actually for a stove, wood burning stove. Been experimenting. Look at the beautiful wine caps. They're growing in straw. They love decaying material. They love wood chips. So this is a success. I put these in last October. They're doing well now. I'll be doing a full video on it. But I harvested a bunch of these yesterday and ate them. Absolutely delicious. And you can see them popping up all over the place. This is what they look like when they're smaller. Really beautiful white specks on a wine burgundy colored top. And they're still coming. Look, there's a little real tiny one. Then they get to something like this and then they will get really wide. Here's one down there. And you can cut the tops off. More growing tucked in there. More sweet potatoes back here. These are the peppers people have been asking me. These are the peppers that I overwintered. Uh, I think about half of them survived. I haven't harvested anything. I'm not going to overwinter them indoors, but I'm going to put these in a um, cold frame where I dug down about two or three feet and I'm going to just keep these outside. That'll be experiment. It was just too much work growing them inside. In fact, here's two that I never even planted and they just died off. Wanted to show you this. Be doing a harvesting video on all of this soon. This is my ginger. I've done several um, sort of seed starting videos. These are rhizomes, but how to get these started early indoors so that you get a good seven months of growth here in Maryland Zone 7. So you want your ginger set up so that it's kind of sprouted and the greenery starting to grow, you have some roots, so that when you put it into these containers, they take off. They want a good six, seven months of growing. If you just put the rhizome in, say in April, then it's got to sit there for a while to kind of bud out and start growing and you're losing several weeks to several months. Get these started indoors. I'll be doing a video on this, but it's just growing. I don't think it could grow any better. And you can see, look at that. I'm going to have, oh, it smells wonderful too. I'm going to have so much ginger. So this is a success. So you saw the sweet potatoes. Ginger I grew last year. It wasn't really spectacular. So what I do towards the end of each season is I kind of look at what did well, stick with it. What didn't grow well and I kind of come up with a plan and that's when I learned that ginger needs a solid seven months of growing that means put it in sprouted let it take off this is some of my composting bids I make compost in here so this is just gonna be a big tour this compost is ready to be spun and moistened up a little bit and then it'll be put out in my garden here's the uh, eggplant I was talking about these are the muscadines. This is two plants, some green beans growing in there. I'm letting all my beans dry, and then in a couple of weeks, these aren't dry enough yet. I can't break that open. We'll find some that I can. But I'm gonna let them all dry on the vine, and then I'll have dried beans to store for the winter. If you've not seen the muscadines before, let's see, there we go. They look like grapes. They're really, really sweet. Absolutely delicious. And again, it's just one plant right there, one plant over there. I only needed one. But when I first started growing these, I had no idea what they were going to do. But I've been eating them, and they're really sweet. They kind of taste uh, like cotton candy, actually. And then we're coming back around to where all my compost is. And again, you hear me say it all the time, just get started with your compost. If you have the space, any of these methods work. That's just last year's leaves, filled all the way up there, has broken down to the bottom. Asparagus is starting to go into there. 
we'll walk back around to the front but this was filled with leaves and I did a video on this look at that beautiful you absolutely want to start saving your resources your leaves grass uh, cuttings anything that you're weeding trimming or whatever get going look I even have peas growing in here I didn't even notice that all right let's walk around to the main entrance here so coming into the garden different varieties of beans got some purple potteds in there these are delicious still producing nicely you can see different sizes eat them this size you know pick them nice and tender eat them just like green beans as time goes on the different beans I can just crack open save the seeds people have been asking me about the facing heaven peppers they'll probably be ready for sale uh, end of November December I will put a message out there cabbage is doing well been doing lots of videos on composting and manures and unfortunately this is black cows new product which again they're proud enough to put it in their bag so I'm proud enough to talk about it this is just dried cow manure it's not even broken down halfway and if you mix this into your soil in the spring and plant it into it it's going to challenge your plants for nitrogen this is fine for fall stick it on top but it smells like a barnyard people worry about diseases possibly being in there I don't know if that's true or not but it's just not well broken down it's not like it used to be I don't know what they did maybe they'll explain it to us but you're buying this dried cow manure in a bag you're paying five bucks by the time it breaks down it's only going to be a handful of really good compost so I don't know I don't know what they did the kales are all doing well in there I've been harvesting them um, I can see so this is why you have to keep an eye on it looks like there's a crazy oh well there is a crazy caterpillar in there look at this something got in there and you can see all the droppings and it's just chewing everything down um, I mean that's a sign you have a caterpillar well many of them so I will take this off take care of that I'm looking to take these off soon soon as a light freeze comes and kills off that white butterfly I'm not going to use these anymore but for the most part except for there they've really done well taking care of my kales those were collards lettuces put in I don't know if this is wave two or wave three so much is still growing I got a lot of stuff weeded under control I got my energy back feeling kind of good here's the last of my squash or my zucchini there's a couple massive ones in there that I'm saving for seeds one in there two over there I mean one right down there and these were covered in powdery mildew that isn't killing the leaf off it's just covering the plant you can see new stuff is starting to grow let's take a look at nature real quick beautiful and look at all the honeybees yeah I'm getting distracted by the shiny object this is cone flower that was seeded from plants that were growing over there I've already cut them back and they're flowering so it's kind of cool if your perennial cone flower makes it through the winter it comes back it flowers finishes out but seeds planted this summer are flowering now so there's strategies on how you want to keep the blooms coming there's the bee and the butterfly sounds like a good children's book this space looks good peas coming in nice and thick I did a video on that wanted to show you what bolting is so this was my first wave of lettuce this kind of gets bitter and your lettuce because it's been so warm start sending up stalks like this and that's when the soil is just too warm when you break this off let's see if we can see it happen you're going to see a milky color start coming out of here hard to tell but it's there that milky white substance is kind of bitter let's see if we can get it coming off of this one you can see it's starting to come out that's just bitter so 
when the soil gets warm, when the temperatures are too warm, your salad bolts, its goal is to flower like that and then produce seed. So this was the first wave, not so successful, but I encourage you to try and figure out when's the best time to get your fall cool weather crops going. And you may have to start in August, you know, middle of August. Take notes, plant again two weeks, you know, beginning of September or something. Take notes, middle of September, and you'll figure out, you know, what's the best time to plant. There's some more wine caps. I actually took the wine cap um, grain spawn and threw it all over the, my paths in there and over in the main area where I showed you. More lettuce, like you saw my lettuce was uh, bolting, so I put in some new lettuce down there. The kale over here is doing really well. Brussels sprouts. This is the space that I'm going to put in nine tomato plants next year. I really like this space. Put in some cool weather crops in there for now just to see how they do. Here's the Brussels sprouts. Peas. Here are the peas that I planted first. And they're ready to eat. So I'll be harvesting those. And they're doing really well. You know, another planting of peas. Broccoli in there. Celery. Everything looks pretty good. And kind of when the garden gets back on track, I kind of get my energy back. But to be honest with you, it was just, I just hated the high heat and humidity um, through August, even September. Here's something that I don't know what this is. So maybe one of you guys can leave me a, a comment. These are either Cubanelles or sweet bananas, close enough. The ones over here look fine. There's some beautiful peppers. When you come to this plant, there's this growth on them. It's like a skin issue. It's not a powdery mildew or anything like that. It doesn't come off and it's affecting all of them. I have no idea what that is. The ones down there look okay, but something got to these. Very strange. It is getting cooler, but lots of bell peppers. You can know you can see some of the diseases coming on, but they're still producing all over. I will be keeping the pepper section in here. I've already coming around on this side. These are radishes and there's radishes right there. Put them in too early. Soil was too warm. Nothing but upper growth. You could actually stir fry, saute radish leaves. They'll be okay. You can also let them begin to flower and pod. You can eat the pods when tender. But I'm going to clear this out. This will be going forward where I grow garlic, leeks, onions, root crops, things that aren't going to get really tall will all be in this section and it's going to be my root crop garden. There's that tomato plant from the other side inside the fence and just look at all the wonderful tomatoes. I mean it's just going crazy. So I had asparagus right down there, cut that out, let more sunlight in. This is the hot pepper area. A lot of these are going to be picked. I'm going to dry them. You can see all the wine caps coming up all over the place. You want to let your asparagus fern out, get really tall, recharge the roots over June, July, August, September. Um, come October, you can cut them back. They've got plenty of energy and just let some light in. This was all overgrown with weeds. It was like a mosquito factory in here. It was crazy. I normally don't get mosquito bites, so I'm not complaining. But in here, they were just swarming around me. I got like a dozen bites over a couple of days. Uh, but it was crazy. You definitely want to keep air circulating. You want to keep sunlight in because it can bring in diseases and insects. Tomatillos. I just didn't need two plants, so I'm only going to grow one, although they say you need two for them to pollinate properly, but I'm not sure if that's true, so I'm going to test it out. Now, these are tomatillos growing in here now. Got broccoli rob. Some of my first wave of turnips are coming in, but the plants aren't looking so good, and the leaves are really too big for the size of the turnip in here, but I've planted more turnips. Arugula looking really good. Space in here just never got to be used as anything. I'm going to better use it next year. My apples, you know, they're kind of dying on the vine. 
but I'm letting the insects take care of them. And I just let all my fruit trees go this year because of the cicadas. Next year, I'll prune this better and I will, you know, start harvesting the fruit more. Third round of kale, mustard greens all in there. This is the area where I haven't really pruned yet, or I really haven't cleaned up yet. This will all come out. Cucumbers died off over there, letting more beans. Here's a good example of just all the green beans, purple potted beans, yard long beans, cow peas that you can grow. Let them all dry and then I'm going to harvest them and I'll be able to make bean soups and all kinds of stuff. For the trellis next year, I am going to stick to my word and I'm just going to put three tomato plants, three cherry types in here. This is just way too many. More facing heavens, just beautiful. And everything in here is just packed with growth. Um, and again, and this is, today's October 8th. And if I can still get peppers into October 8th, there's no reason why I can't keep the cool weather crops going into probably late December, maybe January. I'm going to put on some of my polytunnels that I talked about at the beginning of um, this year. They will get popped right onto here. And this will be a place where I'm growing radishes, spinach, trying to grow as far as I can into January. The muscadines, one side I had a prune them back yesterday. Fig tree is going crazy. I think it's a brown mission fig. Fig trees are kind of funky here in Maryland. The uh, Chicago hardy fig does well. This could be killed off if we get cold enough temperatures in consecutive days, but it's just huge. I'm like not sure who thought this was a good idea to put a fig tree here, which of course was me. Um, but if it does well, I will prune up the bottom, let that air circulate through, let the sunlight come in from this angle, and I'll just have a big fig tree up here. I did put it in this corner because the sun's going to be behind me, so the shadow is going to go outside the garden, but the growth is a little bit crazy. Put in a bunch of garlic, just did that video yesterday. Blackberries, I'll be doing uh, pruning videos on that and how you can feed them for the spring. This is all overgrown. This should be a path in here. So we'll have to come back through the cherry tomato tunnel. And for me, I feel like this garden is pretty much under control. More leafy greens. I don't need all these. So what am I going to do with this space? I like growing peppers in here. So I'm going to do a pepper container, maybe two. I think peppers do really well in these. Uh, I'll target a couple varieties, maybe do a sweet pepper tower, hot pepper tower. But I'm going to convert most of these over to strawberry towers. I love strawberries and I'm getting a whole another round of strawberries, except that one's rotted on the other side. But I will fill these pockets up with the runners, get these all in position to really take off come spring. And I'm going to have lots of strawberries in here. One of the goals for me is to try and grow what I love and what I'm going to eat and sort of less specimen plants. I also want to have a testing garden where I try out new varieties of vegetables that I've never had before um, and see if I like them. Peppers are going crazy in here. One of my favorite peppers is the roulette. It's really, really sweet, really delicious, and really cool color. This one's a little bit wrinkled because it's been on there too long. Blueberry plants are starting to come back. I'm really happy about that. I've been feeding them fertilizing their base and you can see all this new growth all the way up here which is really comforting to me because I was afraid I was going to lose them from the cicadas. This is cicada damage all in here but the growth is coming back nicely. You know a lot of the plants look like this. This one's struggling a little bit but it's coming back. But when you're growing your blueberries, I mean look at all this new growth. I could probably take cuttings of these. When you're growing blueberries, you want to make sure you have at least two different blueberry varieties. That just helps with pollination. If you just have one variety, you're still going to get blueberries, but you'll get more blueberries and you'll get plumper blueberries with at least two varieties that cross-pollinate each other. And this section is pretty much under control. I bought more uh, blackberry plants, more blueberry plants. I'm going to fill this in more, 
clean it up a little bit. I have a lot of strawberries, runners that are planted into the uh, mulch here. I'll be taking those out, cutting the leaves back, and putting them in those containers I was talking about. These are more muscadines. Um, just don't need them all. I may cut these plants back, figure out how to dig out a huge root ball and put them somewhere else. But this is the fruit garden. This section, I don't really need this here. So I'm gonna clear these out next year, leave this more open, keep it more functional so I can get to my cold frames. And this is where I'm gonna be overwintering. I'll be growing in there, but I'll be overwintering over the peppers right down in there. And this just stays warm. It doesn't freeze because it's deeper in the ground. And of course, this keeps the warmth in through January, February, and March. Some more wild strawberry or tomatoes that are growing. These tomatoes were all planted by nature. Oh, let's come, well, let's go outside here. So I always like to show the flower boxes. I built these four inches, six inches deep, but I'm growing radishes in here. These are uh, short carrots and this is arugula. This coloring is because they need some uh, nitrogen. So yesterday they did get nitrogen. I have more water soluble in there. I'll feed them one more time. But you can grow radishes for sure, short carrots, arugula, different greens in flower boxes like this. You don't need a ton of space. You don't need a garden that large to get started and sort of build your skills. If you haven't heard me talk about it, I have a podcast that I'm doing now, 45 minute podcasts. Um, I'm doing them with Callie Kim over on the West Coast. And you can find that information in the video description if you wanna have some gardening podcasts to listen to. I'm having a lot of fun with it. We're still developing the format, but I think we're starting to figure it out and the podcast should get better and better as we go along. So this is my garden as of October 7th. Pretty spectacular, not for what I'm growing, but because of these temperatures over here in Maryland Zone 7, all this stuff is still alive and kicking. So I think I'm gonna be able to get a lot of food out of here for 10 months out of the year. And let me just show you my favorite, one of my favorite things for the fall. I just love that tree. You know, that tree is starting to die off, probably doesn't have many years left, but it's just absolutely beautiful. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And I really uh, recommend planting your cool weather crops. Maybe you got burned out like I did, but you might get some energy back and it'd be kind of fun to have those leafy greens growing in your garden. And definitely get some garlic in. Again, thanks for watching.